Al Pacino, Keanu Reeves, Charlize Theron movie, The, the Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Anybody ever seen The Devil's Advocate? Quite a movie, quite an intense movie. But in the movie there's all these temptations. Um, Al Pacino plays the devil quite well. <laughs> <laughs> all the things that Jesus talks about in the course, and genius and all these things. Al Pacino really is an amazing performance. And, and Keanu Reeves and Charlize Theron are in a relationship and they go through en enormous temptations for everything. Greed, power, pleasure, status, you know, the whole deal. And, and winning in the courtroom, not losing a case, competition, you know, it's got the whole thing in there. And, and basically it's, it's, there's just enormous temptations that they seem to go through. At the very end, um, it's like... Uh, they're, they're talking in the restroom and there's this other lawyer talking to him and he's kind of come back full circle to where he was at the beginning and then the other lawyer just morphs into Al Pacino and, and Al Pacino says, vanity, gets them every time. Mm -hmm. Like That's like the eighth the pride and, and the vanity. The, that self-recognition that, you know, look at me or look at what I've done or you know, putting an emphasis onto something on the timeline, even a story or something that's supposed to, you know, have you stand out a little bit more than, than the rest, which is where the hierarchy thing comes in, and wanting to be different. Even though the Course keeps telling us, make this year different by making it all the same. Mm -hmm. It keeps encouraging us to go for sameness. Saying sameness isn't boring, it's not monotonous and everything, it's actually quite joyful to have perfect equality, to see everything and everyone the same. And also it says it takes lots of mind training. So what's happening is, is you know, you, you give yourself over to, to a desire to really practice the Course and live the Course and transfer the training, like the workbook talks about. And then that's going to just seem to come up and come up and come up, uh, that, that desire for recognition, that desire to be just a little different, just to be a little distinguished from the rest. And that's why it's, we're given a, a curriculum really to, to teach what we would learn and to practice and practice and practice so much that it's part of like a rinsing that goes on in the mind, you know, where you have more of that experience, like Anna was talking about, that experience where you don't know where, I said, I don't know where I begin and where anything ends. It's just, it's, there's no end. It's just a vast experience. You've been having a lot of those kind of vast, vast experiences and everything. And those are like glimpses. You know, you get, you get a glimpse of, of the real world. You get a glimpse of the happy dream, of the forgiven world. And you know, those are what mystical experiences are about, and, and yet, the core of the, of the training and the practice is to put the purpose out front, to come into an awareness of a purpose, you know, in terms of like, in terms of willingness for what, readiness for what, mastery of, through love, of what, of changing your mind about your mind, of, of changing your mind from believing that you are an ego, changing your mind from believing that everything is changing, to an experience of the constancy of Divine Mind, to the constancy of Spirit, to the unchanging quality of Spirit. You know, it's, that's the, the Course is saying you have to change your mind about your mind. And that, you start off thinking, how, how will I accomplish that? Well, the Holy Spirit is the only <laughs> way that that gets accomplished. You, you may think of changing your behavior. You know, some people want to change their behavior, lose weight, quit smoking, you know, change their financial circumstances, you know, change their intelligence, and so on and so forth. That is more of, you know, tinkering with the deck chairs of the Titanic. 
you know, just moving the, the chairs around. All of that. It's so important in this world. Self-improvement, self-help books, you know, be all that you can be. And all this in terms of like the army or some kind of a program of self-improvement, you start to realize that all of that is still involving pride. And it's still trying to come up with a better self instead of opening humbly and seeing that God created me perfect and maybe I just need to release and forget everything that I've been trying to do to improve upon that perfection. So it's, you're on for, a, it's a deep journey and, and really the one right use of judgment is how do you feel. You, you know, when you feel just a little bit closed off or maybe even when you notice that need for attention, you notice that underneath that there's like a sense of, of neediness or a sense of, of needing to prove something or prove worth or demonstrate worth or whatever. And this whole curriculum is, is designed to show you that you don't have to go down that road anymore. And, and anything that it seems to involve, anything that's with people or public or whatever, you just have a lot of mirrors. You're noticing, you come here and, you know, wow, you've got a whole house full of mirrors. And so you pay attention and you notice and you notice and you notice and you just trust that you'll be carried through into that purity and that innocence. That's what you're really here for.